The mummy pod is a sleeping bag and a mummy pod. Whoa! What is up, everybody? It is May 1st. 2020 almost forgot the year there so we are still in the midst of coronavirus getting out the woods is a little bit hard so we are in one of our favorite hammock camping spots the backyard uh, we finally got a break in the weather so that i could film this video and we have something really cool today and that is the outdoor vitals mummy pod So what we're gonna do is zoom in on this a little bit, take a look at some numbers and some specs, and then we'll set it up. I'll go over some strengths and weaknesses, and then I'm gonna spend the weekend in it, cause I love camping. The Outdoor Vitals Loftec Hybrid Mummy Pod. First thing to keep in mind is that I am six foot four, so I did buy the long version, which Outdoor Vitals states will hold human beings six foot six inches or less sorry people seven feet tall hammock camping might be a tough one for you so this mummy pod is made out of a 20d ripstop nylon that is baffled it is a 650 fill power loftec hybrid insulation so not down it is synthetic the bag that i ordered is the 30 degree and in the long version at 30 degrees, it comes in at 2 pounds, 15 ounces. So essentially, it is 3 pounds. So Outdoor Vitals does call this an ultralight mummy pod. I don't know that I would classify it as ultralight. But for what it is and what you get, it is fairly light. So let's go ahead and compress it down. I'll show you what it looks like next to a 48 ounce Nalgene and you can kind of get a comparison there. So here it is by the large Nalgene. It is about uh, four times as big as the Nalgene. So if, what, what we can do is compress down all the compression straps. And it will actually get pretty pretty small. It does come with a very nice compression bag. So there you go. Fully compressed down. I would say it's about comparable to the size of a basketball. Can't quite palm it. All right, so let's set this thing up and we'll go over it. Woo, a good one. All right, let's try a trick. Snap, instant hammock, wizardry. The mummy pod is both a sleeping bag and an under quilt and over quilt. So what I mean is that you can use it as a normal sleeping bag in a tent, on a pad, on the ground. The foot box unzips so there's a hole on the foot end and a hole on the head end that slide through your hammock. That's how it acts as an over and under quilt. Essentially how it works is that it cocoons around you and the hammock. So let's go set it up and we'll go over some of the positives and negatives. Okay, so the first thing I do is decide where I want the foot end and the head end, and then I will lay it out in the hammock in that configuration. Then what we do is we reach our hand through the sleeping bag, like you're reaching into a sock to turn it inside out, and then you just slide the hammock right into it, and the sleeping bag over the hammock. Super simple.
now what you got to do is adjust it on your hammock where you want. What it comes with is shock cord on either end. And then you run the shock cord up through your carabiner and then back to the mummy pod. So let me set that up and then I'll bring you in and show you what I mean. So I have the hammock up high and horizontal. Obviously you wouldn't sleep in it like that, but I just wanted to raise it up uh, for ease of showing you guys. We're gonna start at the head end and work our way to the foot end and go over some of the features of the mummy pod. So here are the shock cord suspension system that I was talking about. There's one black loop on this side of the sleeping bag and one loop on this side of the sleeping bag. What you have is a cord lock that holds it in place. It goes up around your beaner and then holds your sleeping bag underneath your hammock. And I don't have it snugged up to the hammock because I just have the hammock set up to show you guys in this very horizontal fashion. And again at the foot end you have the same loop and shock cord configuration that goes up through your carabiner and back down. So because when you lay in the hammock you create this cavity here, obviously the head will cinch to keep in warmth. But one really great thing is that Outdoor Vitals has built in these shoulder baffles and they do a really good job of keeping in the warmth. And there's one on each side. Another great feature of this sleeping bag is the zipper. It is a YKK center zipper that is supposed to be an anti-snag so it doesn't catch on your sleeping bag material as easy like normal zippers do. Let's give it a shot. Whoop, snag. It does work better than normal sleeping bag zippers though and it doesn't snag most of the time. It works fairly well. Now down to the foot end. So the foot end has the same caverning problem as the head end does. And so what you do is you take the end of your foot box and you just plug that hole with it right there. Hope you guys can see that. It works very well. Also, it does cinch up. So the combination of those two things keeps your feet very warm. So let's go over some of the weaknesses of this bag and then we'll compare them to the strengths and I'll tell you guys whether I would recommend this bag or not. So I've owned this bag for several years and I've used it quite a few times and here is the only real weakness that I can see and that is this shock cord and loop system where it ties into the bag. You can see how much stress is being put on the material there. It does have four of these so it is divided by four and it does feel fairly sturdy in there but if something were to fail I think that would be the point where it did. I suppose you could sew it up fairly easily and reinforce it by yourself. So the rest of the negatives that I have to say about this aren't weaknesses, more of just gripes by me. One strength is that it isn't super heavy. It also isn't ultra light though. Another strength is that it packs up small enough to about the size of a basketball. Also, I don't think it's going to just explode. It will last you years. It is durable enough. I think the real strength of the mummy pod 
is that it's so versatile. You can use it on the ground and you can use it in a hammock. Also, because of the fill, it will stay warmer than down if it gets wet. Another strength of the Mummy Pod is that it is super simple to learn and super easy to set up every time. Now let's talk about some weaknesses. Weaknesses are it doesn't compress down super small, it isn't ultralight, and there are a couple minor structural weaknesses in the material. Another weakness, which isn't really weakness, it's just me complaining, is that the cinch up on the foot box, I have to tie a knot in it. The cord keeper on there doesn't quite hold it. So I have spent nights in it where I forget to tie it and I'll wake up at 2 a.m. and my foot's kind of cold. That's not really a big deal though, that's just me being a sissy. So those are some strengths and some weaknesses. So would I buy this again? Absolutely. I love this product. I would make a few changes if I were the product manufacturer, but I'm not. So. I would spend the, I think it was right around $140, I would happily spend that again on this product. I've had it for several years, I've stayed in temperatures anywhere from midsummer, where it's in the 60s at night, all the way down to, I think it was 26 degrees uh, a winter ago, and what I did is I just huddled up into a ball in the middle with all, with all of me inside the mummy pod and I actually was quite warm. All right, tea bags. So as always, grab your bananas and head outside. Loopy doop, snoobity boop, bloogity bloogity boop.